I was very pleased this morning to have the opportunity to address the relationship between violence and mental illness, particularly in relationship to schizophrenia. And this is a complicated and emotive issue. We discussed how, in general, violence is the factors related to violence are far more prominent than mental illness itself. And so the social factors of isolation, of social de deprivation, of economic deprivation, of availability of firearms, of alcohol and substance misuse, as well as the age-related demographics of violence being far more prevalent in young males. These are all the factors that, if you like, blow it out of the water beyond mental illness in explaining the higher rates of violence in our population. And they're also important to relate in relation to schizophrenia because when you look at samples of schizophrenia and ask which people are violent, they have those same factors in terms of young age, in terms of substance abuse use, in terms of past history of criminality. These factors come up time and time again. What's also incredibly relevant is that people with schizophrenia are themselves the victims of violence. They may have either violence in their past as having been bullied, or they have had some other victimization event. And indeed, several would argue that from a media point of view that we've missed the boat here, that people with mental illness, our message should be that people with mental illness and schizophrenia are more likely to be the victims of violence than the perpetrators of violence. However, when you do look at it, it still is true that particularly for those that are untreated, who have active illness, who are in relapse, who are taking substance abuse agents, who are not taking medicines, who are actively deluded, psychotic, and hallucinating, those individuals are at a statistically greater risk of violence than the general population. Equally, it is true that when those individuals get, seek, or indeed in some instances receive treatment against their will, their illness recedes somewhat and their symptoms come under control and correspondingly the risk of violence goes down over time. And this is in many ways the rub of it because it becomes an issue of the balance between societal risk as well as the autonomy and our need to provide care to people with schizophrenia. And this is why the issue of violence and schizophrenia plays out so strongly in the media. It tends to be a portrayal of the illness itself, sometimes a portrayal of mental illness in general, and it gets disproportionate airplay in the media often ill-characterizing the features of schizophrenia and conveying long-standing stereotypes that come back to haunt us and stigmatize us, not just as patients, but also as family members and indeed ourselves as clinicians. So what to do about this? It's a hard message to deliver to the, to the media, but we need to be clear. We cannot say that there is not a, high, a, a low rate of violence among people with schizophrenia. Indeed, there is a higher rate of, of violence, but it is contained to a subgroup, and it is also con contained during the course of illness where people have active illness. And of course, that begs us to look at how we get people access to care early, to preventative care, to prevent the sequelae of violence, and then also to manage care across time so that there's good continuity and people don't have a, episodes where they are unwell, stabilized unwell again, and in those periods of relapse where the risk of violence is greater, that we allow that to continue. And so this is a complicated issue that gets at the heart of our relationship, our understanding of societal role and the care of people with schizophrenia, and it's one that we need to pay even greater attention to.